You've probably been hearing a lot lately about web agents, sometimes called browser use agents. These are agents that can automate complex tasks like booking travel, filling out online forms, or completing an advanced search. You can think of browser use agents as a subset of computer use. And it's really exciting stuff, but we're still early. These systems can be fragile. It might trigger the wrong actions, it might expose you to security risks, or just assume the wrong thing about the way you want your task to be completed. That's where Magentic UI comes in. Magentic UI is a new experimental agent system from Microsoft designed to put the human back into the loop. So instead of a fully autonomous agent, Magentic UI supports features like co-planning, co-tasking, and plan learning, where the agent works with you to get things right. And it's fully open source, so you can inspect how it works, plug in your own models, and adapt it to your own needs. Let's dig in into the architecture a little bit. Magentic UI builds on Magentic One, a generalist multi-agent system that the team released last year. It extends it with powerful human-computer interaction capabilities. You can think of Magentic UI as a hierarchical agent system. So you have this orchestrator agent at the top that takes in a user query and breaks it down into a multi-step plan. The plan is only executed after the user approves the plan and the user can provide inputs and feedback on it. During the execution phase, the orchestrator agent can call on a number of specialized agents to delegate the tasks to. The most important one here is, of course, the web server agent that allows um, the agent to control the browser. There is also a coding agent that writes and runs code in a sandbox environment, as well as a file surfer that can handle file operations. The orchestrator agent can also decide when to call onto a user for more input, like putting in your credit card information, or for when the plan needs a little bit more steering. Also an, interest, an interesting feature to call out here are approval guards. These act as safety nets when um, the system is operating in an autonomous mode. So let's, as, let's say you have a costly action like deleting a file or completing a purchase. These get flagged, the request gets funneled to the user to provide direct approval whether to proceed or not. And we'll illustrate this in the demo live. Before diving into things, um, it's also interesting to highlight some of the early evaluation results that the team shared. So while there's still a lot of room for improvement, these early evaluations with simulated users illustrate that it, keeping a human in the loop not only um, makes things safer, but improves the overall accuracy of the system compared to running an autonomous agent system without any human input. Okay, let's dive in. Um, so most importantly, before you get started, make sure that you have Docker running. Um, I have a Docker desktop open and I'm just going to make sure that everything is all right. So by running this command, yep. And then getting Magentic UI running locally is as easy as running these commands right here. So I'm going to give that a try. Next, I'm going to put my OpenAI API key. Note that you can also use uh, Magentic UI with Azure and with Olama locally. I'll show you how to get into that later. OK, and now final command. OK, everything seems to be running right now. And now we can open in browser. Let's take a tour of the UI. So this is where you can start putting your prompts. You can also attach files. And you can get inspired by some of the options provided below. A cool feature is you can actually run multiple sessions in parallel. This is great to parallelize tasks. And this is where you can toggle between your different sessions or start a new one. On the right hand side, this is where you can play with some of the advanced features. So I'm currently using an OpenAI API key, but if you wanted to use Azure AI Foundry or Olama, um, it's as easy as completing the YAML specs here. Um, let's dig into some of the other functionality. Um, if you remember from the architecture deep dive that we went into, we talked about um, action guards. So the AI identifying the actions that require human input. So this is where you can adjust that setting. Right now it uses AI based judgment, but you could change that to never require input or to always require input. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, let's go with the AI based judgment. You can also play with some of the other advanced features while you're here. 
Let's get started with a rather simple task that will get us a sense of all the capabilities that Magentic UI has to offer. I'm thinking of buying a new pair of AirPods Pro. So let me get Magentic UI to help me with that. So I want it to help me compare the prices across a few vendors. I'm thinking about Amazon and maybe Best Buy. Okay, it came up with a plan. So it's gonna first look at Amazon, then Best Buy. I want it to also provide me with a summary. So I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna modify the plan to add that step. So I'm gonna say, summarize findings and give me a recommendation. And now I'm gonna accept the plan. So we can see that it started navigating to the Amazon website and we can watch in real time what actions the agent does. Okay, it, it identified that the zip code was not correct, so it's in the process of updating that. And the way this works is that the browser agent um, takes screenshots of the different phases that the website is at, and then it can parse through um, these images to understand like what GUI elements can, can interact with, what are the actions available to it. Um, so think of it kind of as a tool that is being used at the browser, and then the agent has the ability to parse through the visual information going through it. I'm going to go back to the live view. So now we're toggling to Best Buy. Okay, it exited the survey. It found the results for Best Buy. Now it's in the process of generating the summary. Cool, so you could imagine how this could be a useful task if you're scouring multiple websites at scale in a way that you're not able to compare some of the prices live. Um, I'm curious if I can take this a step further and help me um, complete the transaction. I gave it new instructions. Okay, so this is an example of the approval request. So it says that it's about to add it to cart. I'm gonna approve that. Okay, so it's going to check out. updating my location. So one thing that I can do is I can choose to take over from here and then complete the checkout process. Um, so if I wanna put my credit card information or log in, this is where I can do that. Um, this agent doesn't have access to that information about me, but if you're running this locally, you could choose to put this sort of information in the agent's memory. Um, so I can do that, complete that, and then the agent can't see what I'm doing right now and won't have access to that information. Let's get started with another task. Um, there are many use cases where it's not quite fun to watch an agent go and do it live, but you reap the value and a benefit from it when you can parallelize um, the agent across multiple tasks. So one task that I was playing with is trying to extract information from restaurants and put them in a structured JSON format. Um, and it's what's really cool is that I can retrieve the work that I did previously by looking into my saved plans. 
So this is a plan that I um, was experimenting with. So the task is to go and extract the menu of a certain type of cuisine nearest to a zip code and have it and return it in JSON structure. So um, the plan that I landed with is it first would prompt me to say which cuisine I want, um, then um, it would go to their website and uh, get the information and then return it in JSON format. Um, so let me actually change that step so I can also clarify the zip code. Um, so let's put here the zip code and then I can toggle this one up. Now I don't need it here anymore. Okay. And now let's run the plan. Okay, so let's try the zip code. And then I put Japanese cuisine. Okay, so while it's running, let's run it again, side by side. I'm gonna go back into the plans. And then let's try um, Korean. So you can see that the plans are running in parallel. So um, on the earlier plan I ran, um, it's already identified the restaurant as Fuji and Kendall, and it's starting to navigate through various menu elements. And what is cool about this, like this is a pretty low risk task. Um, it doesn't require my intervention. So you could imagine I could run maybe a hundred of these jobs in parallel and um, go away for a little bit and come back to see the job complete. Um, so I'm probably speed forward to the end so you could see the end result. Okay, so I let that run for a few minutes and I can see that both jobs are done. So that green check mark, it means that the job is complete in case you want to just leave it and come back to it. So I have the Fuji at Kendall restaurant in JSON format. And then here, what do we have? We have Koreana also in JSON format. And then this was super useful to save time running several jobs at once. Um, so to recap, I hope that you found this tutorial useful. This was an overview of all the key functionality that Magentic UI has to offer, how you can collaborate with the agent on planning, task execution, when you're running it in an automated fashion, how you can um, get alerted when you need to pay attention, and then how you can make uh, use of plan learning to automate uh, jobs at scale. Um, if you have feedback or questions, feel free to engage directly in the GitHub repo. We're really looking forward to your feedback.